commentary if there were beings who steal the wealth and property of the eternally dwelling. What items belonging to the temple do they steal? Money, grains, food, or clothing. Once a great Bodhisattva who made the vow, if there are people who committed the five severe, the four heavy, and the ten evil deeds, I can save them. However, if they steal from the eternally dwelling, dwelling, whether it be a blade of grass or a splinter of wood, I cannot save them because it is impossible. I can save those who have killed as many as 84,000 of their parents or committed some such heavy offense. I can save them using the power of my vow. I will save them from the house. However, if they steal food, monetary goods, or even just a grain of rice from a temple, I cannot and will not save them. A Bodhisattva made said such a vow. So, stealing from the eternally dwelling is the gravest offense. As Buddhists, we must be very clear on this point. Without the permission from the monastery, do not take anything, be it valuables, grains, or food. If you do so, you will fall into the relentless hell, where for thousands of billions of ants, you will seek escape in vain. Sutra, Earth Star, continued. Worthy mother, beings who commit such offenses will fall into the fivefold relentless hell, where they will constantly seek temporary relief from their suffering, but will never receive even a moment's relief. Commentary Earth Star Bodhisattva continued Worthy Mother or Lady Maya, beings who commit such offenses will fall into the fivefold relentless hell, five kinds of relentless hells, where they will constantly seek temporary relief, relief from their suffering, but will never receive even a moment's relief. Sutra Lady Maya further asked Earth Star Bodhisattva, Why is that hell called relentless? Earth Star replied, Worthy Mother, all the hells are within the great Iron Ring Mountain. The 18 great hells and the 500 subsequent ones each have their own names. There are hundreds of thousands more that also have their own names. The relentless hell is found within a city of hells that encompasses more than 80,000 square miles. That city is made entirely of iron. An unbroken mass of fire extends for 10,000 miles above the city. Within the city are many interconnected hells, each with a different name. Com commentary Shakyamuni Buddha's mother, Lady Maya, further asked Earth Star Bodhisattva. Why is that hell called relentless? To Shakyamuni Buddha's mother, Earth Star Bodhisattva replied, Worthy mother, all the hells are within the great Iron Ring Mountain. The 18 great hells are the largest and the 500 subsequent ones. Each have their own names. Each name is unique. There are hundreds of thousands more that also have their own and different names. What is the relentless hell? The relentless hell is found within a city of hells that encompasses more than 18,000 square miles. That city is made entirely of iron. An unbroken mass of fire extends for 10,000 miles above the city. The fire that extends above the relentless hell shoots from the west side of the city wall to the east side. And from east side to the west side, Walls of fire also shoot from the south side of the city wall to the north side and from north to south. This hell is full of fire and evil beasts everywhere that there is hardly any empty space. Within the city are many interconnected hells, each with a different name. Sutra There is just one hell called Relentless. Its circumference is 18,000 miles. The wall of that hell is a thousand miles high, totally made of iron and covered with a fire burning downward that is met by a fire burning upward. Iron snakes and dogs swarm 
fire rays back and forth along the top of that wall. Commentary There is just one hell called Relentless. This hell is named Relentless because the sufferings there are incessant. incessant. Who are the souls suffering in the hells? Those who committed offenses. Typically, someone dies without being too conscious of the pain. For example, someone is burned to death at once in a fire or someone dies at once from the slash of a knife. Once they are dead, they do not notice any pain in the house. However, do beings notice their pain after death? They do not. But after they die once, they are born again, then die and are reborn repeatedly. How do they come to life again? There are two kinds of wind in the house. What are they? One is putrid and the other is fragrant. Both are known as clever breezes, which strangely enough blow and revive the dead. Those resurrected by the putrid wind are born again but ugly in appearance. Those resurrected by the fragrant wind are good looking. Most of those who are revived by the putrid wind continue to suffer while those destined for the heavens are revived by the fragrant one. The fragrant breeze makes beings beautiful. In contrast, the putrid wind blows over and beings causes them to, uh, to be ugly like asuras. As I described it earlier, all their facial features bunch together as tightly as if they were in one company. Is that not ugly? Revival by the putrid wind occurs instantly and there is not the slightest interruption in the suffering. Its circumference of this large city is 18,000 miles. The wall of that hell is a thousand miles high. Because the wall of that hell is 1,000 miles high, all sunlight is blocked. It is dark in the hells except fires cast enough light to see by. The fires are the fires of karma, which roast and sear the skin, burning people as they suffer intolerable pain. Think about it. What would you do if you have to go there? No one is ever at ease in such a place. The the 1,000 mile high wall is totally made of iron. Solid iron. Iron is symbolic of the firm and cold comic obstacles that send us to the house. Living beings' comic retribution is so solid that when they get to that place, their hearts turn stone cold. They, they resolve any wish to complete for fame or profit in such a place. There is only suffering. They experience no other thought. If you were there, a slap on the face would be much preferred over being burned by fire. Someone kicking you would be preferred over the pain of being beaten by a dog. You would be content then. And the city is covered with a fire burning downward and is met by a fire burning upward. Iron snakes and dogs. At every one of the four corners of this 100 mile high city is a dog 800 miles tall. Each dog has eight heads, each of which has eight bull-like horns, making a total of 64 horns. As the heads turn about, the horns become wheels of fire and knives. So that wherever one goes, or whenever one goes, one is slicing about and doing damage. Has anyone seen this kind of monster, a horned dog? What do you think of these animals? Go ahead and take a look if you wish. But let me tell you, you will never come back. There is no returning and no leaving that place. Going there is not like going to the movies. When you go to the movies, you can always walk out. But when you go to the house, there is no home to return to and no such freedom to, of choice. Not only do these dogs and snakes bite, they also spew, spew fire. They have fires that burn their bodies which make them smell so noxiously that anyone who smells it will vomit their very guts. 
this is not a pleasant feeling. You don't have to go there and look. Just imagine it and you know it is uncomfortable. These iron snakes and dogs race back and forth along the top of that house wall. Sutra, in that hell, there is a bed that extends for 10,000 miles. One person undergoing punishment sees his or her own body covering the entire bed. When hundreds of thousands of people undergo punishment, simultaneously, H still sees his or her own body covering the bed. That is how retributions are undergone by those with the same karma. Commentary in that hell, there is a bed that is not for beings there to sleep, but to make offenders suffer. The size of this bed stands for 10,000 miles. One person undergoing punishment sees his or her own body covering the entire bed. When hundreds of thousands of people undergo punishment simultaneously, each still sees his or her own body covering the bed. That is how retributions are undergone by those with the same karma. These punishments are a result of bad karma. Sutra What is more, their offenders undergo extreme suffering. Hundreds of thousands of yakshas and other evil ghosts display fangs like swords and eyes like lightning as they pull and drag the offenders with their brass clawed hands. Other yakshas wield huge iron halberds that they use to pierce, pierce the offenders' mouths and noses or stab their bellies and backs. They toss the offenders into the air and then catch them by scoring them with a halberd habits or they let them drop onto the bed. Iron eagles pecked at the offender's eyes and iron serpents wrap around their necks. Long nails are driven into all their limbs. Their tongues are pulled out, stressed and then blowed through. Their in internal organs are gouged out, sliced and minced. Molten, molten copper is poured into their mouths and their bodies are bound with hot iron. Responses to their karma go on like that throughout hundreds of thousands of deaths and rebirths. They pass through hundreds of millions of ants seeking escape in vain. Whether we are reciting a sutra, the Buddha's name, or a mantra, we use energy. How should we use this energy? This energy must originate from the Dantian and return to the Dantian. Dantian lies inside the navel. The energy originated from the Dantian is adequate so one ought, to, ought not to overtly exert it. One shouldn't underexert either, but rather it should be done in a regular fashion as not to hurt it. Energy originating from Dantian, the fundamental thought is continuous and inexhaustible. However, if you do not know how to use it, you may injure your energy or even cut it off. Be aware of this point. If you know how to utilize it, whether writing or doing anything, then you do things with the one fell soup. soup an indication of your mastery. What is more, there are many offenders who undergo the various kinds of extreme suffering in their house. Hundreds of thousands of yakshas, yeah, yakshas are speeding ghosts and evil ones. There are many kinds of yakshas, such as the flying yakshas and the ground traveling yakshas and other evil ghosts. Evil ghosts are just yakshas and yakshas are just evil ghosts. Among the various kinds of yakshas, this particular type of evil ghosts referred to are the ground traveling yakshas. They display fangs like swords. Their mouths are like carvings of blood, their teeth like blades. And eyes are lightning as they pull and drag the offenders with their brass clawed hands. Their eyes shine like lightning and their hands are made of brass. 
or as strong as brass. These ghosts pick offenders up and toss them about with their enormous strength, throw them perhaps several yards, perhaps a hundred. Beings there have to go where this ghost order. Other yashas wield huge iron halberds that they use to pierce, pierce the offenders' bodies, mouths and noses, or stab their bellies and backs. They toss the offenders into the air and then catch them by skewering them with their halberds. Or they let them drop onto the bed, not let them sleep, but poke and pierce them with these iron halberds. Iron eagles peck at the offender's eyes and has and crack open the skulls to eat the brains. And one type of iron serpents in particular that wrap around their necks. Long nails are driven into their all their limbs and joints. Their tongues are pulled out, stressed, and then blowed through. Don't lie or engage in gossip, regardless of how others treat us. We refuse to critique others, for if we do, we will enter this hell, and our tongue will be plucked or blowed through like a field. Their internal organs are gouged out, sliced, and minced. Molten copper is poured into their mouths and their bodies are bound with hot iron. Responses to their karma go on like that throughout at least hundreds of thousands of deaths and rebirths. They undergo 10,000 deaths and as many births in a single day. They pass through hundreds of millions of ants seeking escape in vain. It is difficult to leave this hell. Sutra, when this world is destroyed, they find themselves in another world. When that world is destroyed, they pass on to another one. When that world too is destroyed, they move on to another one. When this world comes into being again, they return here. The situation involving relentless retribution for offenses is like that. Moreover, five comic responses account for the name relentless. What are the five? First, it is said to be relentless because punishment is undergone day and night throughout many ends without ceasing for a moment. Second, it is said to be relentless because one person feels it in the same way that many people feel it. Third, it is said to be relentless because repeated punishments continue without cease throughout years that stretch into the Utah's of ends. Those punishments are inflicted by instruments of torture such as forks and clubs, or by eagles, serpents, wolves, and dogs, or by pounding, grinding, sawing, drilling, chiseling, cutting, and chopping, or by boiling liquids, iron nets, iron ropes, iron asses, and iron horses, or by rawhide stripes bound around one's head and moited a moated iron put over the over one's body, or by means of iron pellets and drinks of molten molten iron. Fourth, it is said to be relentless because all beings undergo karmic responses based on the offenses that they have committed, whether they be men, women, savages, old, young, honorable, or lowly whether they be dragons, spirits, gods, or ghosts. Fifth, it is said to be relentless because offenders continually undergo 10,000 deaths and as many rebirths each day and night from the moment they first enter this hell and on through hundreds of thousands of ends. During that time, they seek even a moment's grief, but it never comes. Only when their karma is exhausted can they leave the hell and be born elsewhere. Earth stop is said to the worthy mother. That is a brief description of the relentless hell. If I were to speak extensively about the names of all the implements of punishment in their hells and all the sufferings there, I could not finish speaking in an entire errand. After hearing that, Lady Maya placed her palms together sorrowfully, made obeisance, and withdrew.
commentary right now, the average lifespan of a human being is a bit over 60 years. This, of course, it is just an average, which does not consider the exceptions. Those who live to be a hundred or those who die at the age of one or two. Neither one is an average for most people. When Shakyamuni Buddha was in the world, the average lifespan was 70 to 80 years. Now it is 60 to 70 years. At the beginning, the human lifespan is 84,000 years. Every century, the human lifespan decreases by one year, and man's height diminishes by an inch. When the lifespan decreases to 10 years, it will turn and again begin to increase until it reaches 84,000 years. The period during which the lifespan diminishes is called a decreasing era. The period in which it lengthens is called an increasing era. One cycle of an increasing era and a decreasing era is called a compa, and 1,000 of these constitute a small compa. 20 small compas make a median compa, and 4 median compas constitute one great compa. Each of the 4 median compas consists of the stages of forming, abiding, decaying, and emptiness. Each stage lasts one median compa, which is equivalent to 20 small compas. This world in which we live has its times of forming, abiding, decaying, and emptiness. Every world decays. Places that were dry land several thousand years ago are now submerged and no longer exist. Earthquakes eradicate entire villages, districts, or even countries. That is what is meant by when this world is destroyed, they find themselves in another world. It is not the case when that when this world ends, one's karma in their house is exhausted, far from it. One simply moves to house in another world where the deeds done with the body find retribution. When that world is destroyed according to the stages in sequence, they pass on to another one. When that world too is destroyed, they move on to another one. In general, they move out of places that are destroyed and move on to places that are inter intact. When this world comes into being again, they return here. The situation involving relentless retribution for offenses for offenses is like that. This is what is means what is meant by relentless. The retribution for offenses is continuous and never quits. Moreover, five comic responses account for the name relentless. This hell is called relentless, or Avisi in Sanskrit, because of the five events that occur due to the power of karma. What are the five relentless aspects? First, it is said to be relentless because punishment is undergone day and night throughout many or countless ends without ceasing for a moment. There is no respite from the bitter retribution received due to one's own comic creation. Second, it is said to be relentless because one person feels it in the same way that many people feel it. One person in this hell is as full as many people in it. Third, it is said to be relentless because repeated punishments continue without cease throughout years that stretch into limitless Nayutasa bands. Those punishments are inflicted by instruments of torture such as forks and clubs. The body is both the tool for creating the karma and the tool for receiving the retribution, or by eagles, serpents, wolves, and dogs, or by pounding, such as great someone in a rice mill, grinding, sawing, drilling, chiseling someone's bone marrow with iron, cutting and chopping someone's bones to pieces, or by boiling someone in pot of oily liquids. Is that not miserable? Such as the iron nails, iron ropes, iron asses, iron horses, or by raw high stripes bound around one's head and molded iron poured over one's body, or by mills of iron pellets, 
when someone is hungry and drinks up molten iron, when someone is thirsty for tea or water. Fourth, it is said to be relentless because all beings undergo karmic responses based on the offenses that they have committed, whether they be men, women, savages. Savages refer to tribes in peripheral regions, such as the barbarous, barbarous people in various parts of China. In southern China, there were the southern barbarians. For example, Manchu said to Su Xing, a native of Chu, he is a southern barbarian with a tongue like a bird, which is not in the heritage of kings. He talks the way a bird chirps. You have no idea what he is saying. In historical China, people in Shandong, East Mountain, Shanxi, West Mountain, Henan, Southern River, and Hebei, Northern River, all spoke Mandarin. People south of Hunan, Southern Lake, were called Southern Bar Barbarians because they could not be understood by Mandarin speakers. We do not need to mention English because the Chinese did not even understand each other then. Hence, Southerners were called Barbarians. The West and China have not established exchanges or communication then. The word for Barbarian contains the word insect because the Southerners were considered snake-like. People in Western China were called Tran, Kanin. The Easterners were called Yi and Northerners Di, which both contain the radical Kanin in it. Basically, they were seen as transformed from dogs. The Chinese character for the Chang people has the radical goat on top. That is to say, they were also transformed from animals. There was also the Hu people, whether old, young, honorable, or lowly. At what age is considered old or young? Usually 80 or above is considered old age and 10 years old of age is a child. The honorable may be kings and the lowly may be ordinary citizens. Whether they be dragons, spirits, gods, or ghosts, all of them equally receive the retribution they deserve, making this the relentless hell. Fifth, it is said to be relentless because offenders continually undergo 10,000 deaths and as many rebirths each day and night from the movement they first enter this hell and on through hundreds of thousands of ends. When one dies, the clever breeze revives the offender, but only for him to suffer and die again. Thus, it is said, my wrath death, deaths and my wrath births continuously without cease. During that time, they seek even a moment's relief, but it never comes. There is no respite for even as long a time as a thought. Only when their karma is exhausted can they leave the hell and be born elsewhere. When will such incessant suffering stop? When one's comic obstructions end? Hence, this is the relentless hell. Earth Star Bodhisattva said to the worthy mother, Lady Maya, that is a brief description of the relentless hell. If I were to speak extensively about the names of all the implements of punishment in the house and all the sufferings there in detail, I could not finish speaking in an entire end, even if I want to. After hearing that, Lady Maya, Shakyamuni Buddha's mother, placed her palms together and extremely sorrowfully made obeisance to Earth's Dabodhisattva and withdrew.